Good evening, everyone. My name is Christine Janamala. I'm currently a sophomore in the Global Liberal Studies program, studying politics, rights, and development, and I absolutely love it. And this summer, I was working in Kolkata with the Durbar Mahila Samanwaya Committee. This is a collective of sex workers, over 65,000, working in the Kolkata region as well as in India at large. And I wanted to discuss briefly today the right to pleasure. The right to pleasure is a little bit more of a marginalized right compared to housing, compared to shelter, compared to food rights. But within the city of Kolkata, which is an extremely poor, extremely dense city, it can be a very tense topic. So this is Durba Mahila Samanwaya Committee. These are some of the ladies that work um, as sex workers and are also part of the committee themselves. They work in Sonigachi. Sonigachi is one of the largest urban slums as well as brothel areas in the entire world. They advocate within this community for sex worker rights, legalizing prostitution, and protecting the right to pleasure for other entertainment workers and marginalized groups. So my project focused specifically on the anti-trafficking mechanisms, the grassroots mechanisms that the CBO was accomplishing. So these women worked on the self-regulatory boards, which I'll be discussing in depth, but are basically grassroots initiatives to try and prevent trafficking from entering this region. From their anti-trafficking approaches to their sex education as seen here, Durbar's programs are led by a desire to enhance the quality of life and to protect the social and political rights of these sex workers in a community that's already very art cast and marginalized. And they do this with the intent for a greater vision. They want to envision a world where all marginalized communities, whether they're untouchable castes or whether they're um, immigrants without uh, legal rights, where they can all be treated with equal amounts of respect and um, value in their lives. I wanted to provide a little bit of context. Trafficking has been kind of a hot topic in today's human rights discourse, and this is really important but can sometimes lead to foregrounding and backgrounding of different localization issues. So globally speaking, it's obviously one of the most um, important and damaging criminal networks existing today. USAID, as sort of David was speaking to about the issues with donor sanctions, currently has a sanction against providing funding to NGOs like Durbar that don't adequately uh, decry the act of prostitution or, or aren't anti-prostitution, which leads to really interesting problems for communities like this which really need this sort of funding. Regionally, Durbar is the largest community of sex workers in South Asia, which means they span a network from Bangladesh to Sri Lanka and are doing things that are admirable, but also uh, in line with communities in Germany, in New South Wales, Australia, um, in areas that are much more diverse and well connected, yet Durbar is able to accomplish things of similar resources here. Culturally speaking, um, one of the things that I was most fascinated by, and I'll discuss this a little bit more, is the NGO community. Sonigachi is a very poor region. It's a brothel, it's a slum. There's lots of NGOs there, and Kolkata itself has a history of missionary work through Mother Teresa, which means that there's NGOs that are there for religious reasons. There's NGOs that are there for HIV AIDS initiatives. And a lot of these NGOs take a very anti-prostitution stance. They f prefer a model of rescue and rehabilitation, which is completely contrary to what Durbar initiates. Durbar is instead looking to empower these women, providing a rights-first framework, which ties in with the international framework that we're looking at here. And culturally speaking, Unfortunately, India has a lot of sexual repression tied into its history, along with a history of incredible sexual liberation. Within this community, the sex worker community, they have some incredibly progressive ideas and perspectives within a larger uh, city and regional network that's very repressed sexually. And the organization, although I'm specifically talking about the uh, self-regulatory boards and what Durbar does for its anti-trafficking initiatives, Durbar is incredible. It does work from micro-lending to children's initiatives. It runs a boarding school. It runs a cultural initiative that teaches dance lessons. And they also work with communities that are the untouchable castes or work with entertainment workers that might not necessarily be sex workers outright. And this woman is an extremely woman, important woman to me. Her name is Ms. Purnima Chatterjee, and she's currently the director of the self-regulatory boards. And she was the one who gave me the goal to be able to express what's going on as well as I can to all of you here today. So I'm excited to be able to do that. So let's talk a little bit about what these are. These are a very unique, very innovative approach to trafficking that hasn't really been seen anywhere else. The self-regulatory boards um, started very recently, and they're basically a community network of people that are 50% sex workers, 50% community leaders, that are in attempting to prevent new entry from to Sonigachi, to the brothel area, from people that are being trafficked. So upon entry, they're brought to this SRBs, either by a malik, which is a madam, 
or a sex worker who's also a peer educator. So they're identified, they're brought to a safe house, which I've been to. The safe house has two beds, it has a television, they're given three square meals a day, and given a safe place to rest. Then they're given a bone density test. This is absolutely amazing to me. They're given an ossification test to test the density of their bones to determine whether or not they're minors. So if they are a minor, they're being sent to the India's child protection boards. The child protection boards usually repatriate them. A lot of the community members are coming from Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, or outside states, so they'll be sent back home. However, if they are an adult, there's two ways things can go. They talk with the self-regulatory boards. They get to hear what it is like to be a sex worker in the, this region. Durbar has been around since 1996, and they've been established, they've been able to establish a community that's been incredibly well protected for these women, well protected for these clients of these women, as well as the LGBTQ community and the children of these sex workers. So if they find themselves continuing to want to pursue sex work, they're given instructions on what Sonigachi is like, what dangers they might face, what things to expect. And if they're not interested in sex work, if they are being trafficked or being somehow coerced, they're either given legal advice and counsel, they're not forced to pursue any charges, or they're given vocational training or other opportunities. Meet a mom dad right here. She's 24, an incredibly bright woman with an amazing style, sense of fashion and style. Um, and she was brought to Sonigachi under coercive techniques, and she just wanted to become a singer. That's all she wanted to do in her life, and someone told her this was where to go. It was not where to go, unfortunately, but she didn't leave. She realized that she wanted to do something that was a lot more community-driven, and instead she was able to become a receptionist within this community. Briefly, I just want to talk about some of the guiding tensions that can hopefully open up, hopefully open up discussion for you guys to ask us questions. Most importantly, I was interested in looking at the idea of using human rights first instead of using a rescue rehabilitation model compared to a lot of the other NGOs that I was looking at. There are also quite a lot of other things that we went through in our independent studies and our human rights seminar that are up there on the board for us to consider as well. For me, my biggest criticism, I know this was a question that Masuki asked earlier, or I think um, Suzanne asked earlier, about what was the biggest problem or problematic area of tension that I was recognizing. And to me, that was the fact that there wasn't enough counseling services for these women. These are women who are actually have been trafficked, that I've been able to speak to, interview, and hear their life stories, and yet there was no sort of counseling network, trauma support services available for them at all, which really was heartbreaking, but also so indicative about the resiliency of man and of human beings to respond to these situations. This is currently because they don't have enough funding to have a separate counselor for the self-regulatory boards, so the HIV AIDS counselor has to do both roles. Moving forward, these are um, some children from Durbar's uh, boarding school for kids, which was one of the highlights of my entire experience. Durbar is continuing to work to repeal the Immoral Trafficking Prevention Act, which is India's anti-trafficking act that really creates a lot of legal and economic difficulties for sex workers as it stands. So Nagachi has continued to produce amazing research within its field and is a prominent member of this advocacy network. And personally, I'm interested in exploring what decriminalization looks like. Sonigachi and Durbar is looking towards this hypothetical state of a legalized network for sex workers in order to protect sex worker rights. Hopefully next year, as I'll be in Berlin doing a year abroad through my GLS program, I'm interested in exploring what decriminalization currently looks like there and return to DMSC to look at follow-ups and as well as pr procuring funding for their SRB program. So I wanted to give a big, big, big heartfelt thanks to everyone here, to, de to the Dean, to Vasuki, Pat, Kim, the list is here, Robert, Heidi, Pintu, Smarajit, um, as well as all my, my fellow fellows. I know someone wanted to say that phrase earlier, so I'm going <laughs> to steal it. Um, you guys are incredible. I'm so excited for all you guys are doing and what you guys are going to be doing. And um, my heartfelt thanks as well to, to my mom and my sister and, and Chris. So thank you guys so much, and I'm excited to hear your questions. And I'm so glad, more than anything, that you're willing to hear these stories, because that's what really makes a difference. Thank you. Namaskar. Namaskar.